All right, let's start with a word of prayer. Heads bowed, eyes closed, everyone facing, sitting correctly in your desk, facing forward. To make sure we're all in class starts, we're sitting up, we're ready to go, listen. I know some of you may be tired, Mrs. Rules. I live a tired life, I'm always tired, but we still get up, we still do our job, we still work hard. Um, and God blesses us when we do that, okay? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Dear Lord, thank you for this day, God. Thank you for each and every sixth grader here. Lord, help us to have a good day. Lord, help us to learn to work hard. Help us to be um, responsible. Get all of our assignments in and done. And Lord, help us to um, study so we can get good grades. Lord, help us to um, do our best, Lord. We love you so much. In your name I pray. Amen. All right. What side dish do you bring for Thanksgiving dinner when you accidentally sat on the sweet potatoes? What side dish do you bring for Thanksgiving dinner when you accidentally sat on the sweet potatoes? That's a good guess, but squash casserole. <laughs> what role do green beans play in the Thanksgiving dinner? Similar to the answer I just had. What role do green beans play in the Thanksgiving dinner? The casserole. I like that one. You guys ever had green bean casserole Thanksgiving? I love green bean casserole. It's like green beans and they put like a soup in there and it's got some fried onions on top. So yummy. Um, what's a turkey's favorite dessert? Peach gobbler. These are corny jokes, I know, but I get a kick out of them. Why was the Thanksgiving soup so expensive? It had 24 carrots. Good. Carrots. Uh, um, when you buy a diamond, it, they, they measure a diamond on its value by its carrots. So why was it so valuable? It had 24 carrots. Okay. Never mind. Last one. Why do the cranberries turn red? Because they saw the turkey dressing. <laughs> okay. You guys are fun. Turn your books to page 60. Turn your books to page 60. Page 60. Language. Language page 60. We're adding on to the punctuation we've already spoken about, talked about. GI, let me know. Not here yet. Okay, page 60. Show my mic is on. We've talked about commas. We've talked about, um, we learned yesterday, quotation marks. Today we're going to talk about semicolons and colons. Look at page 60. We're going to go pretty quickly through this. I want to spend a little bit of time, give you time for your creative writing page and your spelling today. Semicolons join what? Is anybody reading with me? Semicolons join what? Sentences. Read it nice and loud. Ready? Begin. Semicolons join. We already learned this, right? When we were talking about when we have a run-on sentence, Leanne, remember when we have a run-on sentence? That's when we have two sentences that are not joined correctly, right? Like, Landon was sitting in class. Landon was eating chips in class. But he was tired, okay? That doesn't, those, those sentences didn't make sense. But it was a run-on. I just kept going, okay? When I have two sentences that are joined incorrectly, it's called a run-on sentence. How do I join two sentences correctly? How do I make it a compound sentence? They either have to be joined with a comma and a what? Conjunction or a semicolon. So we've already talked about this, okay? You already know that two related sentences can be combined into one compound sentence with a comma and a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon. They give you examples. I want everyone looking at your book. Josh likes to read about what? All right, class. I'm going to change these out because this one gives me a headache. But I'm going to ask you one more time. When the teacher is teaching and I'm asking you to follow along, we need to be following along. I've talked to you about your study habits. We can't learn if we're not paying attention. 
now I'm reading right out of the blue box, reading right out where we're supposed to be, right here. So if you're following along and I pause and ask you a question, you should be able to say the next word. Okay, so let's look at that again. In the very top, semicolons join sentences. I just read that little paragraph. You already know two related sentences can be combined into one compound sentence with a comma and a coordinating conjunction or a semicolon. And they gave us two examples here. Do you guys see the examples? Put your pointer finger on the examples. Then I have to start going back to the basics, like second grade, okay? Pointer finger tells me you know where we are. Everyone's sitting up straight and tall, not resting our head. We're not at nap time. We're in sixth grade. Let's read it together, starting with the word Josh. I have a brother named Josh. Here we go. Ready? Begin. Josh likes to read about... But... Okay, so we have two sentence here, sentences here. Josh likes to read about missionary pilots, but Danny prefers to read stories about the sea. Our first sentence, Josh likes to read about missionary pilots. Our second sentence, Danny prefers to read stories about the sea. We join them with a comma and a what? A coordinating conjunction there. Let's look at the second example. Read it nice and loud. Everybody together, ready? Cameron, okay, put your pointer finger there so I know you're following along. Thank you. Ready? Begin. Josh likes to read about missionary pilots. Danny prefers to read stories about the sea. Same sentences here. The first time they joined it with a comma and a coordinating conjunction. The second time they joined it using a semicolon. Semicolon rule number one. Girls, read it nice and loud for me. Ready? Begin. <coughs> Okay, use a semicolon to join two simple sentences if you do not choose to use a comma and a coordinating conjunction. That's what we just talked about. If we're joining two simple sentences and we don't use a comma and conjunction, the only other possibility that we can use is a semicolon. If we do not use a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon, we have a run-on sentence. Okay, so it's very important that you understand these are the only two ways, Tony. The only two ways, Tony, eyes up here, the only two ways we can join simple sentences is with a comma and a coordinating conjunction or with a what class? Semicolon. semicolon. Thank you, Adam, for paying attention. The only two ways we can join a sentence is with a comma and a conjunction, Tony, or a semicolon. Landon, the only two ways we can join two sentences is with a comma and a conjunction or a semicolon. Let's look at the second rule. Boys, rule number two. Ready? Begin. Okay, use a semicolon and a conjunction rather than a comma and a conjunction to join two simple sentences if those sentences already contain uh, commas. Here's the reason, okay? I'm going to give you an example. What does this rule mean? Okay, it's really just to avoid confusion, this rule. So if I have a sentence like, we went to the store the bank the park and then home But they just went straight home. Okay, now, normally I would join two simple sentences with a comma and a coordinating conjunction or with a semicolon by itself. But here, how many commas do I already have here? I have one, three, okay? If I put another comma here, it almost is like confusing because these commas are being used to separate what? A list of things, okay? So when we have a sentence like this, guys, eyes up here, Tristan. When we have a sentence like this where we have lots of commas already 
instead of using another comma in front of the conjunction, we're going to swap it out and we're going to use a semicolon. What that does to my head is it sets this apart. This isn't part of the series. This is the start of a new sentence. Okay? So that's what it helps. It just helps to avoid confusion. I'm not confused thinking that this is just another part of this list of things. I realize that this is another sentence. Okay? So when we have lots of commas, we use a semicolon and a conjunction. Okay? That's all that the semicolon rule number two is stating. Let's look closely in that yellow box where it says, look closely. If you were in second grade, I would say get your spy glasses out and look down at it, but you guys are too big for that. So, let's look closely in this yellow box and let's read it together out loud. Ready? Begin. The semicolon is used in compound sentences. Was that hard to understand? No, it's pretty repetitive, right? We use it to join compound sentences. Let's look at the think. Add semicolons or commas to the following compound sentences. Number one, the entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Would I add a comma or would I add a semicolon in this sentence? Who can raise their hand and tell me? Ariel? Okay, where would I put the comma? Okay, why would you choose a comma? It's not? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. Do we have two complete thoughts there? Yes. So it is actually two simple sentences. So what would we put in there instead? A semicolon. This one is a Bible verse, okay? The entrance of thy words giveth light. It's talking about God's word. It, when God's word is, is read, it brings the light. We talked about... If you guys were in my second grade class, we memorized the, the Bible verse, Thy lamp is a, or thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We talked about how God's word, Josiah, it lights our way. The world is a very dark place. In fact, the world seems to be getting darker and darker every day, doesn't it? Um, people are making things that are bad to be good things. They're not good things. More and more evil things are taking place. And so, how do we stay away from those type of things. How do we know what to trust? How do we know what the, the truth is? Why well, do we have to look at God's word? God's word is our light. If we are walking in a dark path in a, in a forest and we're all by ourselves, I would not want to be in that situation. I would get lost. Many people get disoriented. They tell you not to hike alone in, in mountainous areas because you get going and all the trees look the same. All the paths look the same. Many people get disoriented. They get lost. And then they have to send out rescue teams for them, right? So when you're out, you want to have that light. You want to have a guide. And the Bible says that God's word is that light. And this verse right here in our book, the entrance of thy words giveth light. How do we know? How are we going to know what to do with our life, Gavin? Gavin, how are you going to know what God wants you to do when you get older? Well, the Bible says that we have to, we have to read God's word. It's what gives us the light. It's what gives us that direction. Shane, how do you know what God wants you to do? Which path he wants you to take? You're going to have to read God's word. It brings light. It gives you direction. It keeps you away from danger, right? If I had big old bear traps set up here, down this aisle, and I brought Gavin up, and I blindfolded Gavin, and I said, okay, Gavin, I don't know if you guys have seen a bear trap. Those things are massive, right? If this thing closed in on Gavin, it would probably take his leg off. So can you imagine if I had these real bear traps set all down this aisle here and I, I blindfolded Gavin and I said, okay, Gavin, go for it. Do you think he's just going to confidentially, with, sorry, confidentially, um, with confidence uh, walk down that aisle blindfolded without being able to see? Do you think he might be a little scared? I wouldn't let him do it because I wouldn't want him to lose a leg. I would have to be there by Gavin saying, Gavin, okay, trust me. The Bible says that God is it. He has a still small voice. He guides us, right? I would be Gavin. Hey, take two steps to the left. Okay, Gavin. Now there's a bear trap right here. Okay, now I want you to take a baby step, two baby steps straight forward. Okay, don't turn. Just go straight forward. And I would guide him through that. And that's how life is. The Bible says Satan is like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He's setting those traps for you guys. He's setting those traps of. Uh, alcohol or the party life or drugs and he makes it look good and it's a big trap as soon as you get caught in it it's hard to get out 
It can destroy your life. I have a friend right now. He's my age. He went to a Christian school with me. And my mom just called me yesterday and said he's not going to live probably another week. He's on his deathbed. He's only 36 years old. You know what? He started doing drugs when he was in high school. In a Christian school, he started doing drugs. And he got kicked out. He got ex expelled from our Christian school. But that's when it started for him. He got trapped. He made the wrong decision. And now he's, not, he's never had a family. He's never been able to finish college. And now he's about to die. And I, and I know that um, this is language. But I love how the, this curriculum we use is a Christian Center curriculum. And it ties in the Bible. It ties in the, the Christian worldview. Because, guys, life is so much bigger than language, right? Life is so much bigger than those math problems some of you didn't do for your homework last night. Life is about making the right choices. And if we make the right choices, we are going to work hard. We are going to get our homework done. But we got to follow God. we got to do what God wants us to do. Okay? So when we're reading these sentences, try to think about, especially in Scripture, what is God trying to teach us here? Number two. I think all of these are straight from the Bible, these sentences. Number two. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. What would he put in here? A comma or a semicolon? Yes. What? Right. Where at and why? Okay, so you're saying that he only is my rock is one sentence. And then you're saying that the second sentence is, and my salvation, he is my defense? It does have a conjunction here, but is that conjunction joining two sentences? No. Someone help me out, Josiah. What do we need here? Semicolon where? Um. After what word? After salvation. Very good. The first sentence is, He only is my rock and my salvation. The second sentence is, He is my defense. It's talking about God. He is my rock, my salvation. He is my defense. He's the one who protects me. Semicolon between salvation and He. Number three, weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning. I love this verse in scriptures. I've, I've clung to this verse many days. We have some hard times. Sometimes we lose someone that we love. Uh, my grandmother went to heaven um, just two summers ago, and that was hard. It's hard losing someone that you love. It's hard when someone goes to heaven. But this battle verse, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. God always brings joy again into our life. Um, so where, what do we need here? A comma or a semicolon? Who's got it? Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Josiah? Uh, comma. comma where? Yes, after the word night, before the conjunction, but. Very good. We have two sentences here. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Number four, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What do we need here, Tony? The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. Where at? After side. Very good. Four is on my side is one sentence. I will not fear is the second sentence. Number five. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Shane, can you do this one for me? Semicolon after Lord. Very good. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Why is there a comma before the two words, O Lord? Who can tell me why? Josiah? Okay, we always pause when we come to a comma, but why are we taking a pause there? Why do we put a comma there, Shane? Well, if it's just direct words, we would use quotation marks. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Why do we have a comma before the words, O Lord? Yes, it's a direct address. Who are they talking to here in this sentence? I think this is David. I think this is a psalm. Show me thy ways, O Lord. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the Lord. He's talking directly to him. This is a direct address. Remember, we always use a comma in front of someone's name when we're talking directly to them. Okay, good job. Um, all of number six. David fought bears, lions, and giants. 
but he also sang beautiful songs. Gavin, what would we need here? A semicolon good. Where? Good. Between giants and the word but. Why would we use a semicolon and not a comma here, Gavin? Good. We have the words in a series. This means we already have some commas, so we cannot have too many commas. And number seven, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Tristan, what would we have here? What do we need to put in? A semicolon where? Gianni, if you can hear me, go ahead and comment. Say that again. Right after shepherd. Very good. The Lord is my shepherd. Semicolon, I shall not want. Flip our pages over to page 61 now. Call on the colon. Okay, we talked about the semicolon. Now we're talking about the colon. Colon rule number one. Okay, it's in bold and blue. Let's all read it together. Nice and loud. Ready, begin. Use a colon before a list of items often introduced by such words as the following or as follows. Do not use a colon directly after a verb if the colon separates the verb from a complement. Okay? Look at the examples. Do you see where it says wrong and right? Look at the wrong example. Go to the store and buy semi or colon, hot dogs, potato salad, and baked beans. That one is wrong. Okay? Because we do not have the words the following. Look at the right way. Go to the store and buy the following. Hot dogs, potato salad, and baked beans. The first one where it says wrong, we, we just don't need a colon there. We would just leave it out. Go to the store and buy hot dogs, potato salad, and baked beans. But when you include the words like the following or as follows, we would need a semicolon after that. Okay? Let's look at the next little section there. It says do not use a colon directly after a preposition if it separates the preposition from its object. Okay? The only way you're going to get this is if you're looking at your book. Okay? So look at the example right there where it says wrong. The cake was made from the cake was made from uh, flour, sugar, butter, and bananas. Okay? They put a colon after the word from, but the rule just said don't put it um, after a preposition if it separates the preposition from its object. Remember we have um Objects of the preposition. Now, we haven't talked about this in sixth grade yet, but I want your eyes up here because you did talk about it in fifth grade and in fourth grade. Remember, we have a list of prepositions, and when we get to prepositions, we'll memorize the list. But this is a funny way I like to um, picture it in my kid's head. Okay, um, here's a tree. Cute little tree. And here is Sammy the squirrel. Now, I am not an artist, so this squirrel is going to look pretty funny here. There we go. We'll have him holding a, he's holding a little nut in his hand, okay? Looks like a ghost with a tail. Lovely. Here, I'll give him some ears. Yeah, it looks like a bat. I don't know. But he's Sammy the squirrel, okay? And a preposition is any word that tells me where Sammy the squirrel is in relation to the tree. Okay? He could go under it. He could go over it if he's a flying squirrel. He might be. He could go in it if he goes in this hole. He could go beneath it. He could go around it. He could go to it. He could go away from it. So all of those words, to, from, around, under, over, above, beneath, um, below, beside. There's so many other ones. You guys get the idea, right? But the idea is wherever Sammy is in relation to the tree, that's a preposition. Okay? Prepositions always start what we call a prepositional phrase. Okay? So if you see something like this in your sentence, to the store, we call this a prepositional phrase. 
It starts with a preposition. Did you guys learn these last year? Yes or no? Okay, good. And it ends with, what do we call this? The object of the preposition. Okay, here's a preposition. This is the object of the preposition. We um, shorten that calling them OPs. Okay, so we have our prep. We have our object of the preposition. When we're using our colon, we do not want to put a colon after a preposition and it separates it from its object of the preposition. And this actually would be all the way to here is where our prepositional phrase would really end because we have several objects of the prepositions here. Okay? So make sure you understand that we don't put a colon after a preposition if it separates a preposition from the objects of the preposition. So that's all that rule is talking about. And they give you the example there. The cake was made from flour, sugar, butter, and bananas. A prepositional phrase would be from flour, sugar, butter, and bananas. That's the whole prepositional phrase. We don't want to separate it. The right way says the cake was made from the following items. Colon. Now your prepositional phrase is from the following items. Okay? And then they listed flour, sugar, butter, and bananas. All right, let's look at colon rule number two in the bold blueprint. Read it nice and loud. Class ready, begin. Use a colon between the chapter and verse of a Bible reference. We already know this. Proverbs 3, 5. We put a colon separating the chapter and the verse. Rule number three. Read it nice and loud. Ready, begin. Use a colon between the hour and the minute of a time reference. We already know this. You guys have already been doing this, right? You're writing your time. 5.30, Okay, and then rule number four, ready, begin. Use a colon after the salutation of a business letter. Now, when you are in second grade, you learn how to write a friendly letter, right? Dear Sally. What do we put after the word Sally in a friendly letter? What did you say? A comma. We use a comma after the salutation of a friendly letter, right? Dear Sally, dear Mom, dear Jake. But when you're writing a business letter, okay, for example, sometimes when I had to apply for the waiver from our county to get our school to be able to open in person, I had to send out some business forms to whom it may concern. And when you're writing the salutation of a business letter, you're going to use a colon, not a comma. Okay? So make sure you understand that. All right, let's practice this. Think A. Add colons where needed in the following sentences. Number one. Some famous frontiersmen are as follows. Daniel Boone, Kit Carson, and Davy Crockett. Where would our colon go here, Liliana? After follows. Very good. Number two. Huh? Two dots. And dot, dot. Number two, in addition to traveling on foot, the pioneers used the following means of transportation. Log rafts, flatboats, and wagons. Where do we put the colon here, Ariel? No. What do you think, um, Sydney? After the word transportation, yeah. The pioneers use the following means of transportation, colon, and then list log rafts, flag, flat boats, and wagons. Okay, number three, most pioneers took along such tools as the following, an adze, an auger, a hammer, a saw, a hoe, and a plowshare. Where do we put the colon? Gavin? Okay. We need to all have our masks on and not playing with them. They don't break if you just keep them on your face. Who's got this one? Number four, many household you I'm sorry, number three, most pioneers took along tools, such tools as the following. 
and uh, and odds and auger a hammer a saw a hole in a plowshare. Um, Adam. After the word following, number four: in many household utensils were called by pioneer boys: wooden spoons, ladles, bowls, and platters. Um, Lena, where would we put it? No. You want it to come before your list of things. Many household utensils were carved by Pioneer. Did you say boys or bulls? Boys. It should come after boys, not bulls. Boys. Because then it gives you the list of what they carved. Wooden spoons, ladles, bowls, and platters. Number five. The following animals were raised by the Pioneers. Cattle, hogs, sheep, and chicken. Shane? After the word pioneers. Very good. Flip your pages over to the next page, page 62. This continues at the top there, number six. Um, Tony, read me number six, please. Pigeon? Good. Where would the colon go? After the word following. Cameron, read number seven for me, please. No, Ephesians 2 8. You're right. Where does the colon go, Cameron? There needs to be one there. There's a spot where there's a colon missing. Josiah, put your mask on, please. It's going to be so obvious when you hear it. You're going to be like, oh, let me out and help him out. After the 2, you know how you said Ephesians 2.8 and then you're like, no, Ephesians 28, and I said, no, it's Ephesians 2.8. We always put a colon between the chapter and the verse of a Bible. Number 8, in order to know God's will, read Proverbs 16.3 and do what it says. Where does the colon go, Emily? Between the 16 and the 3. Number 9, Josiah, read it for me, please. Okay, so where do the columns go? Good. Between 5 and 30 and between 10 and the 0, 0. And then number 10, Landon. The following schedule will be observed today. Breakfast at 6 o'clock a.m. Guided tours from 7.30 a.m. until 12 o'clock noon. Lunch at 12.45 p.m. and tours again from 1.30 p.m. until dark. Put your mask on, Cameron. Leanne, go ahead. 6 a.m. 6 a.m.? 7.30. 7 a.m.? 12 o'clock noon? 12.45. Yep, and there's... 1.30. Yep, and there's one more. The following schedule will be observed today. Breakfast at 6 a.m., guided tours at 7.30 a.m. until noon, lunch at 12.45 p.m., and tours again until 1.30 p.m. until dark. The key, the hint there is the words, the following. The following schedule will be observed today. Breakfast at 6 a.m. Uh, no? Tony, can you help me out? After the word today, because Landon here, we're saying the following. The following means there's going to be a list of things. The following schedule will be observed today. And then it gives the list of what's going to be observed today. So you need a colon separating that. 
Okay, think B is for homework and it's going to be graded, but I'm going to give you time right now to get it done in class. Okay, so there are 15 of them and I'm going to give you about 8 minutes or so. Go. Shouldn't take you long. You're doing colons and semicolons. Remember the semicolons are when we're separating two separate sentences. The colons are between verses, times, hours, and minutes, uh, before a list of things when we're using the words like as follows or the following. No, these are my favorite. Subjects, Bible, English, and Arithmetic. Why are you separating favorite and subjects? These are my favorite. It's saying these are my favorite subjects. And then those are the subjects. These are my favorite subjects, not these are my favorite. Subjects, Bible, English, and Arithmetic. Where are you putting your break there? You're putting it between the wrong two words there. Yeah. These are my favorite subjects. And then there's your list. What are your favorite subjects? Well, my favorite subjects are Bible, English, and Arithmetic. Okay? Okay. If it needs a semicolon. We will use semicolons when we're dividing two simple sentences. Just say a focus and work quickly, please. The pages for tonight's assignment are as follows. Page 17 through 24, pages 28 through 33, and pages 40 to 42. We just went over these rules. Oop, let's see. Right here. Colon rule number one. Use a colon before a list of items often introduced by such words as the following or as follows. The pages for tonight's assignments are as follows. Pages 17 through 24, pages 28 through 33, and pages 40 to 42. When you are completely finished with Think B, double check your answers first, then make sure your name is on this page, and then go ahead and rip it out, and then you can come turn it in up here. Once you have turned it in, you can start working on Creative Writing, page 16. Mm -hmm. As long as your name's on it, make sure your name's on it first.
make sure your names are on them, please. Uh, is that an emergency? Because if not, then you need to wait till lunch. Should be soon. I, I've gotten a date of the 18th, so hopefully on the 18th. Yeah. Bef hopefully before Thanksgiving. Uh, we use pens and penmanship. Supposed to come in on um, November 18th, so next week is supposed to be in. Yes. Yes, so it says write the answer in the blank below each clue. The clue letter is A. Okay, so you've got to come up with a hard working insect that starts with the letter A. A very young person that starts with the letter A. Made with pepperoni and cheese that starts with the letter A. Pizza? So the clue letter is A. So I have to start with A? It's supposed to start with A. Stop here some clues. Or, okay, hold on. Okay, it just has an A in it. It has to have an A in it. Yes. Is anyone still working on the grammar? A couple of you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and have you put that away, and then you can finish that for homework, okay? Everyone pull out your creative writing books now. Creative writing. If you didn't finish your grammar, finish it for homework. Maybe you'll have time to go back to it here in a minute. Page number 16 is what you're doing for your creative writing page. You do the warm-up, and then on the page that it says, write the answer in the blank below each clue. The clue letter is A, okay? I was just looking at it carefully to see. It doesn't have to start with the letter A. It just has to have the letter A in it. Let's see if we can do this together, okay? When you're writing on the line, make sure you're writing nice and neatly. Those of you who are brand new, you can write in print. If you are writing in print, though, eyes on me, okay? Remember when you have your line. Make sure, for one thing, that we are writing on the line. And make sure that our letters are all the exact same size when they're lowercase letters, okay? Um, we want to make sure we're writing. If you're writing in cursive, same thing. We need to make sure we're writing neatly on the line. We have the right spacing between our letters. And the letters are the accurate size. We don't write too big. We don't want to write too little. Make sure we have the right spacing and size. Number one, a hard working insect that has the letter A in it. I already gave it to you. What is it? Yeah. Ant. The Bible talks about the ant. The Bible actually, God tells us to look at the ways of the ant. The ants are always, if you watch them, they're always busy. They're always looking for food. They're always taking food to their colonies, saving it up. They're always working. They know that their, su their survival depends on them constantly being at work. So the Bible says that we ought to be like the ant. Okay, hardworking insect, ant. Let's go number two. Keeps the doctor away. What keeps the doctor away? It's a little, it's a little like saying you used to say when you were a kid. Emily? An apple. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Number two down, apple. You guys writing these in your book? Are we daydreaming? Number three going down. The opposite of never, guys. Ever. Always. Good. The opposite means the opposite. Antonym. Always. And number four, the 49th state. The 49th state. Alaska. Alaska. So you notice this whole column begin began with the clue letter A. We had ant, apple, always, and Alaska. Number two, though, it says the clue is within the word. So in this column, the letter A is going to be somewhere in the word. A very young person. A very young person. Yes. Does kid have the letter A in it? 
Adult is not a very young person. Mm, a daughter can be, well, I'm a daughter and I'm not a very young person. Teenager is not very young. Baby. baby. So what we're looking for, a baby. Number two, the words we use. The words we use, what we're actually learning, what this class is, what we just did in our book. We studied the English language. Good. The words we use are our language. L-A-N-G-U-A-G-E, language. Landon, you take your money there. Number three, a bank. My husband works at a bank. Number four, worn in cool weather. What do we wear in cool weather? A jacket, yeah, good. You could have technically, technically probably put sweater, it has an A in it, but jacket's the one they're looking for, jacket. Okay, the last column here, it says it ends with the clue. Ends with a clue. Made, so it's going to end with the letter what? A. Made with pepperoni and cheese. Pizza. P-I-Z-Z-A. In cursive? It's like an N, but the second hump is lower, and then you have a tail off of it. It's an interesting letter. That's what a Z looks like. Number two, monkey food. Banana. Banana. B A N A N A. Banana. A dog's worst enemy. A cat doesn't end with the letter A. Tony? A flea. Causes them to itch. Flea. You look down below. And number four, smaller than an ocean. Sea. The sea. You can see the C. S E A C. Um, no. Okay, go ahead and write your name on this page. Tear it out. And you may come turn this one in up front. And when you go back to your seats, get your spelling books or your spelling list out. Please, second, separate staff, staff. Make sure your name is on it, though. Can I study with Tony on the spelling? No, I know, no. So I kind of learned a little bit of cursive and go through. Okay. But I don't remember all of the letters, so I did some of them. That's good. Cool. Anything you can do. And then, you know, you have this book and you missed all this. But for extra practice, if you want to go back and this gives you the cursive alphabet, it shows you where to start. So you can, like, trace these, and then you can go back and try some of this on your own for your own practice, okay? Okay. So thank you to my favorite. Can you straighten the stacks for me, please? That's okay. Okay, open your books up in your spelling to list number nine. We went over numbers one through twenty-five yesterday. We're gonna go through twenty-six through fifty. Those of you in the paper list, take this time, study, use your hand to cover and then quiz yourself, okay?
Whose paper is this? Yours. Okay. So practice Tony, get that spelling list out. Emmeline, Cameron, get your spelling list out and study, please. Everyone else in your books, list number nine, put your pointer finger on number 26. This is where we're going to start today. Number 26. Josiah, sit up straight and tall for me, please. Liana, we'll go ahead and face forward while you're sitting. Number 26, class, we're going to say, spell, say, ready, begin. Certain. C E R T A I N. Certain. I have heard. Um, people read that word before to me and, and say curtain when they're trying to pronounce it. Remember that the rule is with your C's is that, oops, when C is followed by, do you guys, anyone remember this rule? When C is followed by an E, I, or Y, it says what? It says a sound, okay? When C is followed by E, R, Y, it says, okay? So here, we know this word cannot be curtain because this letter right here tells us that that's going to be a S sound, okay? Curtain is spelled very similar but with a U, okay? So that's why this is on this commonly misspelled or mispronounced list because a lot of people confuse these two. But if you know the rule, when C is followed by E, I, Y, it says, then that will help you to know how to pronounce it. Okay, uh, certain. Number 27, what is this word? Changeable. Changeable. Let's spell it. Ready, begin. C H A N G E A B L E. Changeable. Changeable. You have the word change. And then you have the suffix able. The common error here, and I'm going to take your pencil or your pen or your highlighter and highlight that little tiny letter E. Most people, when they're writing the word changeable, they take out that letter E. Okay, we leave it in there. We have the word change, and all we do is add the suffix, the ending A, B, L, E. Okay, so make sure you know we keep that E in there. Number 28, ready, begin. Choose. C-H-O-O-S-E, choose. You say that seems pretty easy. Why do people misspell that one? Because they usually, what they do, is they um, confuse it with number 29. What is that word? Chose. Let's spell it, ready? C-H-O-S-E, chose. To me it's pretty easy because choose has two O's, ooh. Chose has that long O sound and the silent E, okay? Number 30, ready, begin. Climbed. C L I M B E D. Climbed. She climbed the wall. Uh, that B sometimes is left out because it's you don't hear it very harshly in that sound. Number 31, what is this word? Close. 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 Spell it with me. Ready? C L O T H E S. Close. A lot of times people spell that without the T H because when you say close, you don't necessarily hear the TH, right? We don't hear the clothes. I got dressed in my clothes today. Okay? So that's why people sometimes misspell it because it doesn't sound the way it's actually spelled. Number 32, ready, begin? Column. C O L U M N. Column. What do you think is commonly misspelled here in this word, Shane? They forget the N because it's silent, okay? We don't say column. Column has a silent N on the end there. I-N-G, coming. I don't really know what people would mistake here, but I'm thinking the uh, uh, uh sound um, is an O in this word. Number 34, ready, begin. Committee, C-O-M-M-I-T-T-E-S. That's what often gets misspelled. They forget either one of the M's or one of the T's. Usually both E's are in there, but make sure you know it has two M's. Completely. C-O-M-P-L-E-T-E-L-Y. Completely. You have the word complete. All you do is add on your suffix L-Y. I think the error here that's commonly um, done is that last E is left out. Number 36. Ready? Begin. Conqueror. C-O-N-Q-U-E-R-O-R. -E Conqueror. Number 37. What is this word? Conscience. conscience. Like my conscience was telling me I shouldn't cheat on that test. 
conscience. Now, it's spelled con-science. That helps you. Once again, just like I told you my B-A-utiful word, you can remember that conscience is spelled con-science. Okay? Um, number 38. Ready? Begin. Course. Say it again. Course. Spell it. C-O-U-R-S-E. Course. Course means like something is rough. Okay? Not smooth. Number 39. What is this word? Courtesy. Courtesy. As a courtesy, I let them borrow my car. Courtesy. Spell it for me, class. Good. Number 40. What is this word? Curiosity. Curiosity. Spell it. C-U-R-I-O-S-I-T-Y. Curiosity. Number 41. Dealt. Everyone say it again. Dealt. dealt. She dealt with the situation. Let's spell it. Ready? Begin. D-E-A-L-T. Dealt. Okay. Number 42. What is this word? Face forward, Cameron. What is this word? Definite. 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 I gave a definite time. We would be leaving. Let's spell it. D-E-F-I-N-I-T-E. -I -I -E. Definite. Number 43. What is this word? Definition. Definition. Let's spell it. D-E-F-I-N-I-T-I-O-N. -I -I Definition. Number 44. What is this word? Describe. Describe. Spell it. D-E-S-R-I-B-E. -E. Describe. Number 45. Description. Ready? Begin. D-E-S-C-R-I-P-T-I-O-N. Description. Sometimes it's that shun at the end. T-I-O-N says shun. It's one of those special sounds you learn in, um, when you took phonics in kindergarten, first and second grade. Okay, number 44. What is this word? Desert. Desert. What is this word? Desert. What is it? Desert. Desert. Very good. Spell it. Desert. Very good. And what's number 47? Dessert. Dessert. Spell it for me. D-E-S-S-E-R-T. Dessert. Very good. Um, there was a trick. Someone told me once about remembering the difference between desert and dessert. That's what it was. I think my S is in it. Something like that. Okay, number 48. What is this word? Develop. Develop. Spell it. D-E-V-E-L-O-P, develop. Good. Um, we used to, when I was a kid, we didn't have the same type of technology that you guys have. I'm not dating myself. But we had cameras that had film in it. Have, has anyone ever seen a camera with film? <laughs> you put film in it, you take pictures, and you have no idea what you're looking at. We didn't have screens on our cameras. We had no idea what that picture was going to turn out like. Until we took that film, we would drop it off at the developing station, whether it was at Walmart or a, or a drugstore. And then we'd have to wait like eight days. And then we would come back and we'd have an envelope with our developed pictures. And we could look through them and it was an exciting time. I saw this joke about how it was so exciting just to be able to wait that eight days and find out with anticipation what your pictures were going to look like. Because we, don't, we didn't have the same thing you guys had. So to develop, develop um, something that is growing or improving or turning into something. That's what that word develop means. Number 49, what is this word? Spell it. Good. And number 50 is? Disappear. Disappear. Spell it. D-I-S-A-P-P-E-A-R. Good. For your homework tonight, you have the crossword challenge only via crosswords. Okay? So you see there are cross numbers 1, and it ends with 42. You only have to do the across. You do not have to do the downs. We'll do the downs another day. List out. Let's read through them, please. Okay, here we go. Number 1, ready? Emily and Cameron, you ready? Yeah. Number 1, say I'm nice and loud so I can hear you. Ready, begin. Faucet. F A U C E T faucet. The R sound in that word is the A U. The C, remember, is followed by an E. So the C makes the S sound faucet because there's an E after it. Okay? Let's spell that one one more time. Ready? Begin. F A U C E T faucet. Now all of you look at me 
and spell it one more time. Ready, begin. Faucet. F-A-U-C-E-T. Faucet. Okay, let's do it one more time. Ready, begin. Faucet. F-A-U-C-E-T. Faucet. Good. Let's look at the next word. What is this word? Fierce. Let's spell it. F-I-E-R-C-E. Fierce. The ear. Ear is I-E-R. Fierce. Has the C sound that makes the S because it has an E after it. Let's spell it one more time and then we'll do it without looking. Ready? Begin. Fierce. F-I-E-R-C-E. Fierce. Now look at Mrs. Roll. Let's do it again. Fierce. F-I-E-R-C-E. Fierce. Do it again. F-I-E-R-C-E. Fierce. Do it again. F-I-E-R-C-E. Fierce. Look at the next word. What is the next word? Fireproof. Fireproof. This is two words put together. Fire and proof. Let's spell it. F-I-R-E-P-R-O-O-F. Fireproof. Now look at me. Fireproof. F-I-R-E-P-R-O-O-F. Fireproof. What's the next word? Following. It's follow with I-N-G at the end. Ready? Begin. Following. F-O-L-L-O-W-I-N-G. Following. Cameron, good job looking at me, not looking at your paper. Everyone's eyes on me again? Let's try to look, spell without looking. Ready? Begin. Following. F-O-L-L-O-W-I-N-G. Following. The next word is? Forgetting. We have forget, then we add another T, and then I-N-G. Okay, let's spell it. Ready? Forgetting. F-O-R-G-E-T-T-I-N-G. Forgetting. We'll do it again without looking. Remember, forget, add a T, and then I-N-G. Ready? Forgetting. F-O-R-G-E-T-T-I-N-G. Forgetting. Okay, let's do the next one, which is forgiveness. We have forgive, with an E at the end, and then ness, N-E-S-S. Let's spell it. Ready? Forgiveness. F-O-R-G-I-V-E-N-E-S-S. -S. Forgiveness. Next one. Fossil. F-O-S-S-I-L. Fossil. Do it again. F-O-S-S-I-L. Fossil. Very good. The next word is? Freight. Freight. Like train, like a freight train. They carry freight. E-I-G-H-T. Okay. We have F-R and then E-I-G-H-T. Let's spell it. Ready? Begin. Freight. F-R-E-I-G-H-T. Freight. Do it again. Freight. F-R-E-I-G-H-T. Freight. Okay, next one is? Frighten. Frighten. This one is I. Fry. Okay, here we go. Ready? Frighten. F-R-I-G-H-T-E-N. Frighten. And then the last one is the word? Fuel. Fuel, as in oil, gasoline, fuel. Okay, ready? Begin. Fuel. F-U-E-L, fuel. Spell it again. F-U-E-L, fuel. You have this one worksheet for your homework tonight. Please do your worksheets and turn them in. If you do poorly on your spelling test, but you do your homework every time, it will help. You do need to study and be ready for your spelling pretest on Thursday. Tomorrow's a day off. Sorry, Elena. So study at home. Yes, ma'am. Acquaintance. It's like a friend. Acquaintance is like a friend. Okay. Did everyone get their language turned in? Their language? Everyone turn in their language? Is anyone not done with their language? Josiah, are you done with your language? You already turned it in? Okay. So sixth grade, the only thing you have for homework from me then, you're done with your language, you're done with your cursor, the only thing you have is a spelling 
that I assigned. That's all you have to have finished by Thursday. So you have tomorrow to work on it as well when you're off. Okay, let's pray and get our lunches. Heads bowed, eyes closed. There be a gentleman that would like to lead us in prayer for lunch. Cameron, thank you. Okay. Perfect. Let's pray. Let's put eyes closed. Go ahead, Cameron. Amen. All right, ladies, you may get your lunches. If you have warm ups, leave them on the back counter for me, okay? Yes, sir. Yes, take somebody with you.